<laughs> okay. So. Have you ever helped prepare a meal in our church kitchen, a monthly potluck, a funeral dinner, a youth mission dinner, pasties? If you have, you realize that when three or four have gathered together, you have a traffic jam. At some point, Anna McGregor had, had enough. For many months, she spoke to Pastor James Bolin about enlarging the kitchen. After much thought and prayer, she, Anna told Pastor James she would donate $100,000 toward the project. In early spring of 2013, Church Council appointed Ruth Hansen and myself as co-chair and Jenny Martin as vice chair of the new Kitchen Task Force Committee. On April 21st, 2013, we held our first um, committee meeting. We discussed the purpose of building a new addition. We wanted not only to be able to better serve the Bethany family, but the, to be an outreach mission to the um, Waterford community. How would, we, how would we need to achieve this purpose? We decided to visit five area churches with commercial kitchens, and we visited Drayton Plains and White Lake Presbyterian, Four Towns in Central Methodist, and the Cadillac of Kitchen, St. Patrick's Catholic Church. After visiting each church, each of us kept a list of what we liked and what we thought didn't work very well. Then, as individuals, we were asked to prioritize the list as most wanted needs. Afterwards, we prioritized the equipment as a, kit, as a committee. Through this process, we learned the difference between needs and wants. Believe me, it was a struggle. Jeff Sterick drew up preliminary rendition of the new edition. The task force then asked Dave Zilke, who recommended Dan Rush, as our architect. After the task force approved the architect's drawings, we put them on display for the congregation to see and to ask questions. On September 16, 2013, ground was broken to start the new edition. It was most exciting to see the new kitchen come together. Every Sunday, there was something new to see. The task force has met over 20 times in the past 16 months. At our last meeting on Monday, August 18th, we spent most of the day really deep cleaning both kitchens. The task force committee is very proud to have accomplished this project, and we give all praise and glory to our Lord for our new kitchen. Thank you. ...of the story, and you can talk to any member of the task force and hear more details and get dirt on each other if you'd like. But in either case, you will hear the same tone. It was a calling. It was a need. And we did our best to fulfill it. We need to take a few moments in our celebration and recognize and honor all the people who really rolled up their sleeves and made this possible. Uh, the first one I'd like to call up here and embarrass is Dave Zilke. Come on, Dave. Come on, Dave. Now you should be taking a picture of me, you know. No, it's not cast iron. And I'm not going to bend the handle for those of you who understand the reference. Are you beating me up with that? No, I'm not beating you up with that. Um, you need, I need to get a little closer to the microphone, so you need to, yeah. As you can tell, he doesn't like this. <laughs> but there's a very good reason for that. Dave gives countless hours behind the scenes that no one ever sees because we usually gather here on Sunday. You know, Kelly, the office person, and myself, we get to see it because we see him coming through. Okay, I'm going to take care of this, and then I'll be back later. And that's his routine. I started here in February and watched him come and go. He would come before the workers came to unlock the place. He would call a couple of times during the day to see if they actually made it and if they were working. 
And then after Kelly leave, he and I would probably talk again, and he'd say, okay, if they're still there, I'll come back later and lock up the place so you don't have to worry about that. He also sat in a lot of meetings with the, the kitchen task force. I sat in on a few of them, giving his wisdom and his guidance and his advice, saying a couple times, why do you want to do that in, being, in using the wisdom of his trade as a builder? And then... There were the other times that he and I sat and talked, and he would kind of go, Paul, this project's a little bigger than we thought. <laughs> and he would share some of his struggles, but I also heard the joy and the celebration. He would always say, I do this because I love Bethany. Dave, we need to recognize that love and honor that you give us through your phenomenal gifts. <laughs> That's not in the script, but if you're into that. So instead of giving you like a golden hammer or a silver wrench, we decided to give you something that'll be etched into your mind for a while. On this pan, it says Dave Zilke, in appreciation for your love and dedication to Bethany Church. August 31st, 2014, and as you can see, it has the sign of the spoon and the fork. <laughs> Thanks. And we have a small gift here of appreciation. Thank you very much. Your <laughs> yes. You want to say anything? Yeah. Just a minute. Okay. <laughs> I make phone calls. <laughs> The people that I worked with, I'm going to start with Ruth Hansen. I mean, she started like two years ago, <laughs> nudging this way, nudging that way. What have you heard about this? What have you heard about that? Great job. All the committee. Jenny Martin, Nancy, and Nancy would fish Bill in all the time, <laughs> run down. I can't be there. He'll unlock for me and so on. It just, it's a wonderful experience. We're so blessed with this church. Anna, love you. <laughs> You've heard uh, them, us talk about the task force. We need to take a few moments and recognize and give thanks. Ruth, please. Oh, and we'll ask you to kind of stand, come here and stand and stay. We got a little gift for you. Good morning. When I first found out about this, I said, oh, do we remember who's on the list? So we start out with Jenny Martin, who did five times more than anybody else. She did all of our paperwork. She looked into everything for us. Nancy Maxfield. <laughs> Louise Abersall. Amy Nelson. Ida McCutcheon. Nelson Hayes, Nona Boss, Caroline Carson, Ruth McCullough, Joyce Heiss, and myself. If you ask any of these ladies, how do you build a kitchen? They'd say, I don't know, but Dave does. <laughs> but what they brought was the experience of how a kitchen works. They brought the memory and the compassion of how a kitchen serves and feeds. The layout is an amalgamation of their input that the architect put into place. They would sit and sometimes wring their hands, not sure what should be done, but knew that they had to stay on the course. So ladies, on behalf of the people of Bethany, I give you a heartfelt thanks. And by movement and consensus of the church council, you as a committee are officially disbanded with our blessings. <laughs> But
but your ongoing gifts and service will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, ladies. So we've recognized the project manager. We've recognized the team and given thanks for all the efforts they did to having this come to pass. But the spark started in an individual, Anna McGregor. The McGregors have been part of this house of worship for a number of years. Let's take a few minutes and hear what this house means to them. John, please. In, uh, sep on September 2nd, 1951, Anna McGregor and Ray McGregor were married in Providence, Rhode Island. Shortly after that, my dad was uh, honorable discharge from the U.S. Navy, not knowing what to do, thinking about reenlisting. His sister and brother were already in Michigan. They said, come to Michigan, enjoy. The Motor City has uh, all these jobs. So in, in early 1952, they moved to Michigan. And shortly after that, they became involved with Bethany Baptist Church down in Pontiac. Um, they were involved with the youth program. They had no children at the time, so they were uh, involved with the youth uh, through the 50s. In 1959, my sister was born. Um, born in this church, dedicated in this church, and later baptized in this church. 1963, I followed. Born here, raised here, dedicated here. Um, baptized here. 1965, Tim was born, raised, dedicated, baptized in Bethany Church. 1971, Jason, born, raised, dedicated, baptized in Bethany. Growing up uh, as a kid in the 60s and 70s, uh, Bethany was a central part of our, ho our home. Whether it was uh, hanging of the greens, Maundy Thursday, uh, Wednesday night or midweek, potlucks and uh, events and programming downstairs in the basement of the old church. Bethany was always there. Even though both my brothers were married outside of Bethany for different reasons, we managed four, four McGregor weddings here. Three due to my ineptitude and dogged determination. Um, in, uh, in 2001, Ray and Anna celebrated their 50th anniversary here at Bethany Church. In 2008, my father's Funeral was here. <coughs> Sorry. In 2010, we celebrated Anna's 80th birthday here in Bethany Church. So the one binding factor for 62 years since they moved to Michigan, besides our family unit, was Bethany Baptist Church. So it's a very important part of our lives. So I want to make three points known, though, because ever since this project started, it's been over and over. This is a McGregor thing, a McGregor thing. And I said, no, it's a Ray and Anna thing. And I'm going to give three reasons why that is. First, my father's uh, frugal nature and his dogged determination to work a plan so that he would have a, a life after retirement for him and my mother. Second, my mother's generosity and love for Bethany. And third, although we supported her 100% throughout this project, I guarantee you, then none of her children said, Mom, spend $100,000 of our inheritance on a kitchen. <laughs> we thank you for your bitterness. I, <laughs> I think you need to talk to the pastor about that. Um, How do you follow that? <laughs> you heard a small testimony about not big, phenomenal, earth-shattering interactions, but a simple, consistent presence. A simple, condition, element of integrity that binds a family together and binds families to come and worship together. I don't know what you call that, but I call that a God thing. You can't describe it in human terms. Not adequately. But you can feel it. You can experience it. And you can share it even when you don't even know that it's possible. Through giving thanks of 62 years, 
through having a little concern about a big donation. It doesn't matter. If God's involved with it, then it must, 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 must be good. We've highlighted the task force. We've highlighted our builder. We have heard a reflection of the family. Now we need to stop for a few minutes and give thanks for our donors. Jenny? Today I'd like to give thanks to all of you who have generously donated to the Kitchen Fundraising Campaign over the last several months. Our biggest thanks goes to Anna, for she had a dream, and today that dream is a reality. Thank you, Anna, for your generous contribution. We can't thank you enough. But like with all dreams and projects, we had a shortfall. So in December, the Kitchen Task Force came to you, the Bethany family, and asked for your financial support for an additional $45,000. As of today, we have raised $38,846, or 86% of our goal. A job well done, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your donation, but also for your support along the way. We've certainly had a few setbacks along the way, and we needed your moral support. Needless to say, it's been a lengthy but rewarding project. Now I'd like to give you just a quick summary of how our fundraising went. In December, with all the excitement in the year coming to an end, we received $14,000 in donations. That was a great start. Then came January, after the holidays and with our long, cold winter. However, in March and April, the sun started to shine and our donations picked up, thanks to a couple generous donations. And we also received a challenge from an anonymous member who offered to match whatever we could raise in the month of April up to $2,000. Not only did we raise the $2,000, but we received an additional $1,800 that resulted in raising a total sum of $5,800, thanks to that generous donor. So thank you all for doing that. We also, with the church council's permission, contacted the family members who had some undesignated memorial funds in the account, in the church account, to see if they would be interested in donating some of those funds to the kitchen fund. And they all said, well, of course, certainly. Together, that added an additional $5,900 to our goal. So Sunday by Sunday, over the last nine months, we have almost reached our goal. But today, we are here to celebrate, to dedicate, and to thank you, the donors, for your support and this exciting project. So on behalf of the Kitchen Task Force, I'd like to say thank you and well done. Will you pray with me, please? As we come together in one heart and one mind, giving thanks and asking God's blessing on the work that we have done. Beautiful Lord, giving savor, Savior, ever-present Spirit, we stop and say thank you for the way that you have involved yourself in the lives of this house. 62 years of dedication by a family, over 100 years of service by a congregation, both of them coming to this point in time and its history to say we are turning the page and we are starting with something new, vibrant. We're not sure exactly how we're going to use it in its totality, but we know, O oh God, that you have the plan. You have the purpose. So we ask that you pour your guiding presence into each and every one of us so that we can use this kitchen and use it to your glory. I ask a prayer of blessing upon those who made this project possible. Dave Zilke, the ladies of the task force, the builders whose skillful hands put in every nail and every screw and every piece of equipment. For the donors who genuinely gave above and beyond to see this ministry, this project, this mission come into fruition. 
For those of us who stood behind and watched and wondered, how will this all come to pass? Loving God, you revealed it to us. Because it stands as part of our building and part of our mission on this day. Continue to pour your spirit out upon the givers, the donors, the McGregor family, the people of this house, as we use this kitchen-loving God. Not merely for our own purpose of potluck gatherings and meals that need to be provided in-house, but in the ways that we can use this kitchen and feed the people in our community and beyond. You've done that with us through your son Jesus the Christ. Help us now through this kitchen and your blessing and these people to carry that to the world. Loving God, we give thanks and celebration in your holy and precious name. Amen. As our ushers prepare to come forward and collect our morning tithes and offerings, our choir has a special treat. Actually, them singing this morning is a special treat because they're not supposed to start until the end of September. So they have a gift that they'd like to share with us. Yes, and uh, Caroline Carson added some lyrics to this. Bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. Bless these walls so firm and stout, keep, keeping want and trouble out. Bless this kitchen. Let us raise our hands in everlasting praise. said just about everything that I was going to say, <laughs> but I want to um, just say that my dream came true. I thought about this for quite a few years, and when I got to a certain age and my health started to kind of go downhill, I uh, 
decided I better take action now or I'll never see this done. <laughs> so we have it done and uh, it's, I'm, I only made it possible, everybody else did all the work. <laughs> and I want to thank Dave and, 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 and Jenny and Rob and all the people who took part in making the extra money come in so that we could finish when we were going over budget. And ever since, whenever we worked in that kitchen, and it was so crowded, years ago when we first built the church, it was still, it was, it wasn't really what we needed. So it's been a long time coming. But now it's finally finished, and we're ready to go. And so pasties, here we go. <laughs> it's my hope to serve the community and glorify God with the building of this extra addition. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.